Welcome to Liftoff, your first place where you can find everything space, and often SpaceX. In today's video, we will tell you about SpaceX's super heavy booster and what makes it more blowing than any other rocket. Stay tuned. SpaceX and Elon Musk want to make Starship the ultimate transporter for humanity to Mars. And that too at shoestring costs compared to the previous generation of rocket costs. Due to Earth's massive size and intense gravitational force, we will need an additional force to lift the Starship off the surface, as it won't be able to generate enough escape velocity on its own. Getting into orbit requires getting to 17,600 miles per hour. The three Raptor engines of a Starship can never produce the thrust to produce this much speed. Starship will need the assistance of an engine that is way more powerful than its own. Yes, we are talking about the assistance of the Super Heavy Booster. The main purpose of the Super Heavy would be to get off the planet. Super Heavy Booster 4 is the third fully stacked Super Heavy Booster, after the Pathfinder BN1, the Test Tank BN2 and the Prototype BN3, according to Musk. It is the lower stage of the SpaceX's mighty spacecraft and the Starship which SpaceX founder Elon Musk is hoping to use to dispatch colonizers to Mars. After it has helped the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's land its astronauts on the moon, one crucial requirement of the Starship is that it has to be able to lift heavy payloads to orbit. This is why SpaceX is going all out on the design of Super Heavy. It will be the most powerful vehicle ever with a gross mass liftoff of over 3 million kilograms. When stood up, you would have to step back to see the top of the booster, as it is tall as a 23-story building. It has a 9-meter diameter and is made of steel, the same material as the 50 meters tall that sits atop it. Previous tests have included only the upper stage. The last one was on May the 5th when the SN15 upper stage prototype launched to an altitude of 10 kilometers before landing safely. However, as SpaceX races to get the Starship ready for its orbital flight, it has now turned to conduct tests on the Super Heavy itself. Booster 4 and SN20 will conduct the Starship program's first ever orbital test flight. When the Super Heavy booster finally takes off, it will blast the upper stage into orbit. The booster itself will eject from the upper stage and will splash down in the Gulf of Mexico shortly after liftoff. And SN20 will power itself to orbit, circling our planet once before splashing down in the Pacific Ocean near the Hawaiian island of Kauai. SpaceX Super Heavy is already scheduled for work, apart from NASA lining it up for landing its astronauts on the moon. SpaceX has already collected a deposit from the Japanese entrepreneur Yasaku Maezawa to take him on a flight around the moon. According to Musk, if all the testing goes well, the Starship could be ready for 2023, which will be in time for NASA's Artemis project in 2024. One of the major features of Booster 4 is the use of sea-level Raptor engines. Each rocket when firing produces an insane 2 mega newton of thrust. The Raptor engine will burn a mixture of methane and oxygen that is cooled to a cryogenic level. The very low temperature means the super heavy tank will be able to contain more fuel at that temperature. Partially completed by early September, Super Heavy Booster 4 supported SpaceX's iconic full stack fit test back on August 6th before returning to the building site but has mostly just floated around Starbase's launch and test facilities in the seven weeks since its second trip to the pad. On September 10th, CEO Elon Musk himself suggested that SpaceX had plans to static fire the booster as early as mid-September, more than six weeks ago. Obviously, nothing even approximating super heavy testing transpired. Instead, at least relative to rapid fire Starbase operations in the two years prior, SpaceX has almost absent-mindedly worked on the booster, mostly completing partially finished wire runs that run its full 69 meter length. In the last few weeks though, the type of work being done on Super Heavy B4 has changed. On September 26th, to give the Starbase construction crew more room to install giant arms on the orbital pad's launch tower, SpaceX removed Super Heavy B4 from the launch mount for the second time, temporarily relocating it to an unused patch of the pad's old landing zone. Booster 4 hasn't been moved since. However, while probably being a bit slower than SpaceX would have liked, large-scale work on the Starship launch tower was effectively completed last week with the installations of two giant rocket-catching Mechazilla arms. 
A great deal of work has also been done on Starbase's orbital tank farm over the last two months, including the installation of the last few storage tanks, the sleeving of those tanks, a great deal of plumbing, and the start of real propellant deliveries. Save for a few days spent testing Starship SN20 in late September and mid-October, the pad construction crews that have to evacuate the pad for 6 to 12 hours for every test have had three full months of work without interruption. Perhaps the most optimistic explanation for the unusually long gap between Booster 4 and Ship 20 rollout and testing is that SpaceX consciously chose to put off vehicle tests to avoid disrupting orbital launch site construction and retasked nearly all Starbase workers for that construction. Regardless, with the launch tower and orbital tank farm now more or less structurally complete and work already underway to prepare the tank farm to support its first booster tests, most of the work that may have been drawing focus and resources away from the ship and booster preparations appears to be wrapping up. That may be why, for the third time, SpaceX technicians began removing a number of Raptor engines from Super Heavy B4 around the start of October. Aside from removing around a third to half of Super Heavy's 29 Raptors, SpaceX also began slowly but surely installing parts of a steel heat shield designed to protect those engines during ground testing, ascent and re-entry. Newer Raptors have also been trickling from Starbase's build site to the launch pad for installation on the booster and more engines will likely be reinstalled as heat shield installation progresses. Perhaps the most unusual part of recent Super Heavy B4 work is the apparent application of some kind of foam around several racks of pressure vessels, hydraulic manifolds and umbilical connections installed around the booster's base. Those racks will eventually be enclosed inside steel aero covers already staged beside the Super Heavy. A number of Twitter users believe that the foam being selectively applied is for acoustic deadening, meant to protect sensitive electronics, valves and computers from the brutal environment Super Heavy itself will produce at liftoff and during ground testing. Ultimately, the Booster 4 work ramping back up and the zenith of orbital pad construction actively now likely behind SpaceX. Preparations for major Super Heavy testing will hopefully resume. SpaceX has yet to perform a full Super Heavy wet dress rehearsal, WDR, fully filling a rocket's tanks and performing a launch countdown, or fire up more than three Raptors on a booster or ship prototype. With any luck, that will finally change in the final months of 2021. And that concludes today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, like, subscribe, and hit the notification feature for more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for your support. I'll see you in the next one.